lost the lead. Hello, it was Frazier Mile on 777777 at Alex35 to 777777. And we are in the World of Tanks to talk about things that don't have anything to do with World of Tanks. Yay! Hooray for everything. Alright, so what are, what tier are we gonna do, Alex? We oh, yeah, have Lux. Five. Alright. So the today, actually... we talk about uh, the differences between the old Halo games and the new Halo game. Ish. So, Alex, do you have anything that you'd like to start out with? Um, I'd say... Um... The old Halo games... The main mechanics... I would see is you'd be able to move around with one joystick, aim with the other, and then shoot. That's really the majority of the game. Yes, but, and you could continue through almost all the Halo games with that. Until you get to Halo Reach, where your movement is aided by jetpacks and sprints at certain times, which I think was good for Big Team Battle. So I feel like competitively it wasn't really that great of a mechanic, but it went more towards casual people who want to do the fun modes. Have yeah, interesting... no, one was, no one was forcing you to use those mechanics, which was fine. Oh, it was perfect. They were forgeable pieces, but you could add to the map. They could add to the map without being armor abilities at all, really. Then Halo 4 happened, and since you had custom loadouts, everyone had whatever armor abilities they wanted. And there's nothing the map maker or nothing the map could do to balance the game or say anything about that. And they included sprint as a default ability, which really turned sprints from an optional thing to a core mechanic, which it was never before. Yeah, and I would certainly say so that... Different. Yeah, I would certainly say that I think I'm a little bit okay with the sprint, because it just makes it so that gameplay is slightly more fluid. Although I would rather have an armor ability, at least at least, I feel like if they have sprints in there, they can't possibly screw up sprint. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't yeah. change. 343 is really good at screwing stuff up, especially armor abilities. I feel like if they made sprint and armor ability again, then there would have to be more armor abilities. And 343 just can't seem to handle that. This is what I would say about turning it back to an armor ability. If we were back to a company that I was confident could do such a thing, I just got one shot of, um, then I would say that I would really want armor abilities back. But Halo 4 definitely shows that I that you can't really put any confidence into 343 with armor abilities. Yeah. I'm not penetrating that guy. Yeah, I would certainly say that um, I think the Spartan abilities actually aren't that bad in addition to Halo. Although I would say that they are a little bit seeming like they could possibly almost entirely be stolen from other games. I would say that they put it together a lot better than most games that I've seen with those abilities like Titanfall and stuff. Like. Uh, our, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and Titanfall both had almost all the same armor, uh, almost all the same abilities uh, in a character, but they were just really sticky and rigid, kind of hard to oh, use I and understand. Hate Advanced Warfare. Yeah, the, the abilities in Advanced Warfare were kind of crap, 
Then Titanfall, they don't really matter because if someone has a Titan, someone else doesn't. It's not even a competition. So basically, in either game, it really was great. It really wasn't a. It really wasn't the mechanic that it was supposed to be. I certainly would say that from the beta, or at least what I can remember. I mean, I can barely remember the beta. It wasn't really that memorable. But, um, the I would say that from what I've seen in the beta, that it definitely is more fluid than those games, at least. And, you know, I you know, love it or hate it, it's, it's new, it's different, it's pretty much a completely different game now, though. Yeah, it's it's not with the same core mechanics anymore. It's not Halo. It looks like Halo, but honestly, it could be a whole different game with a different skin, and it would be basically the same thing that it is right now. Just not with the Halo title on it. Although, it looks good, and the Halo community will be there, which, in a way, makes it Halo all on its own. Well, yeah, certainly I would say that Halo... But the community is what what holds up the Halo the entirety of Halo. I mean, it's really all about that. The community is way less serious in the actual games. And another thing I would like to say, speaking of seriousness, is that the like the seriousness of the game is just going out of proportion. Like Halo Four did not feel serious in any way, and any shape. Not even like though, a parody of Star Wars. Even though it really was a super serious story, and Cortana, it was all about Cortana dying, that was huge. And I certainly think that Halo 4 kind of failed on delivery with that perspective that should have been in the game, uh, that kind of mood and theme that should have been in the game the entire time. I'm staying in the garage, I really appreciate if you hook it over here. Um, Alright, I didn't know you were in the garage. Anyway, uh, I would also say that, oh shit, what I was, I just lost it already. Um, so, I'll step in here. 343 themselves said that Halo 4, or Halo in general, has a cartoony feel to it. And I feel like they really cannot have a serious story if they're going to keep enforcing this cartooniness which before really only existed in the multiplayer because of the red versus blue colors. Well, it really only existed in the first place because of the limitations of the engines at the time, if you think about it. Yeah. The games themselves never were all that cartoony. Like, the bright colors and stuff, they were executed well. Surprisingly, and they kept the game serious in a way. Well, if you want to see a game that isn't cartoony that actually seems very, very real, think about Halo Reach. Halo Reach is significantly serious. Everything in that game is serious, uh, beyond a doubt. And even, even like Fire Firefight, even Big Team Battle, where it's red versus blue seems significantly more serious in Halo or Reach than any other Halo game. And yeah, really, cool. the seriousness is what brings it together. Uh, another one that I... What were you going to say at that point? I was going to say, um... Halo 2 and also Halo 3, their graphics weren't really cartoony at all. They were actually quite grungy in the styling. And... That might be to technical limitations, but I really feel like it was meant to be that one. Yes, I certainly That's would say serious. that it made it a little bit more serious. He's like, um... Holy crap, the guy's got... got yeah, I'm gonna, good. I'm gonna turn around now and go the other direction. This is not a good place to be. I would not go up there. How do they scout all those guys? It was an ELC, Alex. Really fast. Uh, I wouldn't go up there, I really wouldn't. You're gonna die instantaneously. Um, so, one thing that I would move on from this point to the next one. What were we talking about again? The grunginess? Something that we were talking about before, that cartooniness. 
Yeah, cartooniness versus grunginess and seriousness of the story and all that. Shit. I lost it again. That was I had a really good point. What do you what do you have to say? I'll, I'll think about it. Um, is it related to this? Yeah, it was related. I can't remember what it was, but it was related. Oh, well, I'll make a, a statement. Um, the direction that they're going with the multiplayer in that they went in Halo Two Anniversary's multiplayer, those colors are too damn bright. I know, I can't, the gamma is ridiculous. And I would certainly say that it really doesn't look nearly as realistic. It, like, the, it really does look a lot more cartoony than it should. Especially since the models in the game are serious, but the colors are cartoony. It doesn't really flow together as well as it should. I mean, at least the campaign, the campaign's okay. Like, the colors are still ridiculously bright, but it's still okay. Like, if yeah. you really want to see a well-done anniversary, you should look at Halo 1 Anniversary. Every aspect of that game was put to Halo Reach, which is what it should have been, because that is Although what it felt technically like canon. It was Halo Reach with the juicy filter on, if you've been in Forge. Yeah, but it looked really good, you know? Halo Reach was a little bit dark, but that was kind of the point, because Halo Reach's whole storyline is significantly dark. It's, it's entirely about a lost cause. Of course it's going to be dark. Um, and that really should reflect in the, the colors really should reflect in the mood of the Halo game. Like Halo 3 was just a little bit bright. And that was perfect because the ending was certainly bright. And it went well with what happened in the game. Because there was always hope. But yep. in Halo 5, the colors don't really seem to fit anything really. Like, you really need, like, a hunted feel. Everything, I don't know how to get yeah, that, that, what I would say, but... Halo 5, the colors kind of reminds me of car paint. Yeah. It's more like putting colors on something that has nothing to do with the colors that you're putting it on. And yeah, it's all glossy. And... The, that's the opposite of the feeling you should have in Halo 5. Things should be, like, not glossy. Isn't that like the theme? Is how, at least in from what I got from the Hunt the Truth miniseries, they're talking about how dirty Oni is and stuff. And having a game come after it that's all shiny. Yeah, it should. It doesn't it's really like opposite. come out as reflectant as it should be. I have not seen this map in months. No, this map wasn't even in the beta, man. I only played the beta for one day. Yeah, it wasn't in the beta though. Mount Elfcry isn't in the beta either. Apparently there's a light tank that's helping me over here. Uh, so, uh, one thing that I, you touched on the Halo 2 Anniversary multiplayer, and I, what I was going to talk about is the multiplayer, I thought you were going toward the multiplayer idea in Halo. And what I liked, what I've liked about all the Halo games is that multiplayer is somewhat separate from the campaign. Like, the campaign yeah. usually has nothing to do with the actual game itself and really only is a side story. I can't really do anything. It, and the campaign was always, the campaign, um, like, however you looked at it, like, one thing was either a, was the side story to the other thing. I mean, they did go together, but only slightly. And then they took it, they're taking it to a whole nother thing with Halo 4 and Halo 5 by like explaining that there's simulations and crap like that. That's just annoying. I really understand why they do that. It doesn't need to be an explanation. It's just a multiplayer feature that's in a game where, yeah. and they're integrating, they're integrating, they're integrating multiplayer way too much into the Halo franchise now. Like, in every Halo game, you are the lone Spartan. Oh, well, at least almost every Halo game. In almost every Halo game, even when you're playing with your friends, you feel as the lone Spartan. You're the lone wolf fighting against all odds. Like, even in Halo Reach, they still manage to get the lone Spartan feel. And what they're, they're trying way too hard to show team-based gameplay and multiplayer everything in 
Halo 5, like they're adding, they're coming up with Master Chief's team, and then they're coming up with a, some whole completely made up team for Locke, which neither of which really make that much sense, um, at least as of yet in the Halo lore, and really just don't go together because Master Chief has always been the lone wolf, and even without Cortana. I think that it would be interesting, it would still be way more interesting with just him. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that, although I think um, it's new and interesting to have Locke's team, because, you know, that feels more like a hunt if there's a group of people going at it. But uh, Master Chief's thing, I mean, it, it's nice for co-op, which isn't going to be as much of a thing in Halo 5 anyway, so I don't know why they focus on that, kind of. And, um, I mean, it's, it, if they can pull it off like they did in Reach, it won't be a problem. Yeah, but, but I don't like how... Halo 3 isn't very good at pulling things off, so... Yeah, they sort I think they're better at pulling off, uh, pulling off the Band-Aid and making people ache, really. Um... No, what I was thinking about was more the idea that maybe it should just be Chief, I mean, and Locke, because then it w you would really get the characters a lot more. I, yeah. I mean, 343's excuse is that uh, it's going to characterize both Locke and they're going to be able to characterize Locke and uh, Chief better by using Blue Team and Team Osiris. But the issue with that is that Bungie could do that through three Halo games when it was just Chief. So I'm pretty sure that uh, it's entirely possible. I think it's just completely a lack of writing skills in 343, if you think about it. Because, think about it, the only, I'm going to guess the reason why they have all these extra characters is just so that all the extra characters can spout expositions and explain things, you know? It's a bad writing mechanic in itself, and if you can't get it to seem natural, then it's just ridiculously worse for gameplay, because you're going to have to hear the same shit every single time you play the same missions. I'm sure that your people are going to want to play missions over again. I mean, seriously, like, the dialogue in Halo 4 was bad. Yeah, I know, the Halo 4's, Halo 4's dialogue was so bad, that people didn't even come back to the, come back to it, even come back to the campaign, even though the campaign gave you Mark VI armor for beating it on Legendary. And trust me, that was a pain in the fucking ass when I did it. It was terrible because I had to listen to the same shit from Cortana over and over and over again for hours and hours of like four weeks. It's terrible. At least. At least when Cortana talks, it doesn't do what happens in Halo 3. What do you mean? With oh yeah, yeah, it doesn't make you pause. Yeah, but for every single time- But the game had an animation for pausing every single goddamn time there was a button to press. Which was pointless. There is no reason for them to have that in a Halo game. I'm gonna get killed here, I swear. Oh wow, I didn't- I'm coming in to save you. Oh, this, oh hit a house. this house is breakable. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I just think that... I thought that the point of killing off Cortana was because the Chief didn't need to be characterized any further. Or that it would be interesting... It would be an interesting characterization moment to see what the Chief does without Cortana. Like, if they just replace Cortana with, like, four other guys, then it doesn't matter. Like, there's no point of them getting rid of Cortana in the first place. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. might as well have just stuck with her and just not I, had I would have much an annoying team. Have felt, I would have much rather have the game focused on the feeling of aloneness. Yeah, but it would have been perfect because that would have been what would or that would have gone with what happened in the last game. Yeah. It's as if they're trying to abandon everything that they did in Halo 4. I mean, it's not like Halo 4's campaign in story wasn't good. It's just that it was terribly executed. Yeah. 
I mean, at least if they're going to make shit, they have to stick with it. Yeah, they, they they seemed like they were about to set up a theme of, like, Hunter and Hunted. But you can't feel Hunted when you're surrounded by three other Spartans just as experienced as you are. Yeah, I really don't understand not, how the how, what the threat of really how bad. in Hell's name Locke is even a threat. Because, firstly, we don't know anything about him, and all, the only thing, he didn't do anything interesting in Halo Nightfall. The only thing that we can conclude is that he might be an idiot, and he sounded like an idiot. So, there's not really anything to conclude from that. And then, <laughs> beyond that, the... Beyond that, the team, we don't know anything about Team Osiris, unless they really, really naturally set up exposition for Team Osiris, it's going to feel forced upon us that we have this whole new team of people. At least Blue Team will seem familiar, because all those people are familiar with each other. I don't even know anything about Team Osiris, and they're just completely out of nowhere. New Spar They're all new Spartans. I really don't understand what the threat is to Blue Team that Team Osiris is coming after him. I'm pretty sure Blue Team could just stand in one spot and kill everything in the entire goddamn universe because they're Blue Team. True. I mean, they did that in like three books. Pretty sure. Yeah. I mean, it would be more intimidating to have remainders of blue team coming after Master Chief than an entire team of Spartan Fours. Yeah, I'm not really sure why they set up that way. When I when I heard that blue team was going to be in the game, I legitimately thought that, that the Master Chief was going to be haunted by his old friends, and I thought that would have been really that would be cool. Amazing. That would have been awesome. So I don't care about Locke. Locke is a boring character. There's nothing to care about him. He's just some Oni idiot. And then the, all the other people on on Team Osiris, other than Buck, are completely useless. And I don't even know if Buck is useful at all. I really feel like they could have gone without everyone on Team Osiris except for Buck, and it would have been way better. Like, just have Buck be the new recruit on Blue Team. That would have been great. I love it. Or just drop Buck, too. I mean... The only reason we like Buck is we got to play as him for two missions. Well, I don't even know why people like him in the first place. He's not really a very good character. He was just some random ODST. And plus, he obviously wasn't a good team leader because his entire team died twice. So, I'm not really sure that I trust him as a, as a person. He doesn't really seem like he's that good at keeping a team together, which which doesn't really make any sense why he's in a team, or why he's a Spartan for that fact. I mean, yeah, he really isn't as good as they make him out to be. I don't know who they is either. Like, is it just because people like Halo 3 ODST? Because I hate Halo 3 ODST, and I still think that I don't even know. I was going to say, be, and I still think that he's, a, he's not really that great of a character, but I realized that, that that argument doesn't really make any sense because I hate ODST. It's definitely the worst game out of any of them I played. Halo Reach, it says, if he were any better, he would be a Spartan, but he's not anything special. He's, for all I know, he's not any better than the other Spar or the other ODSTs in the ODST game. And really, the whole ODST game is just based off of a coincidence that they all meet each other again. And not die. And then they all end up dying anyway, so what's the point? I don't really understand what the point of Halo 3 ODST was if all the, all the people in the team ended up dying just like Buck's last squad. Well, they got, they got the job done, and then they died. What the hell was the job, anyway? Uh, to get the squid person. That was such a boring thing, honestly. I really don't understand the significance of it. Yeah, because they, there's hundreds more. They made it out like it was be, gonna be something significant, but it really wasn't. Oh, if they know why the Covenant's on Earth. That make them easier to stop? No. 
And in hate and in the regular Halo 3, the actual Halo 3 game, they ask again, what do you think is happening there? But like, nobody effing knows, even though they found out already. So apparently the news never even made it. I don't know, maybe Sergeant Johnson got hit over the head between games. Well, I, I... Halo 5's storyline, its characters, I'm not jazzed. It's not really even excited enough to get anything more than just the game, and even then, I don't even know if I'll get the game. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't pre-ordered the game, I don't plan on pre-ordering the game, unless for some sort of... Bonus, maybe in the Master Chief collection, if that will still be relevant. That would be great. Well, it did say that any progress that you made in the Halo 5 beta would be reflected in the Master in the Halo 5. So maybe that's what you got for having the Master Chief collection. Although I'm not really sure how worth it it was, because all that I learned was that the armor system was crap. I'm waiting for the next big reveal. Yeah, I need to see physically that they have that you can customize every single bit of your Spartan, not just the armor and the helmet, because the armor and the helmet is terrible. So we've basically just talked about story and aesthetics. So. I think we've gone round circle in that perspective. Yeah, and how long have we been doing this? Uh, about twenty-six minutes. I think we're good. Alright. Well guys, I think I'll see you next time and show Alex.